In the latest 2020 release of DDM, folder access controls have been enhanced, now bringing the ability to control visibility and modification rights down to an attribute level. And we're going to use the example of a change order to help us understand this enhancement. So here we have an open change order folder, and here we can see the attributes relating to this change order. Before we take a look at this change, we need to remind ourselves how the existing access controls work. So if we look in DDM admin under access controls at our change order folder, then here we can see the groups that have permissions against this type of folder. And if we have a look at these permissions, then the things that are available are control of visibility and of modification rights. We also have the ability to control who can change state, but in this case, the change order folder is in a workflow, and so the state change will be controlled by the workflow. So our access controls are quite limited in terms of who can see the folder and who has modification rights on it. If we take a look at this change order folder, then we might want to bring control down to an attribute level. So in this example, once the change type has been set and once the change request has been approved, we may not want that to be modified. And there may be some sensitive attributes that we don't want visible to all users, and we'll use the example of cost impact. So how do we set these access controls? So if we go into DDM admin and we go to our folders, and we're going to take a look at the change order folder. So we're going to edit this. And if we go to folder attributes, and first of all, we'll take the change type attribute. So if we edit this, what we need to look at is attribute visibility rules. And here we can select which groups have access controls against this attribute. Now, the groups that I use against the change orders in my database are all prefixed with CO, apart from all employees, so anyone can raise a change order. Then these other groups will have permissions against this folder type. So we're going to select all of these, and if we click on OK. So currently every access control has been set and we're going to, to change that. So we need the change type to be visible to all groups, so that's okay, but we're going to control modification. So let's switch that off. And what I want to allow is modification by all employees at a proposed state, so when the change order is raised, and also by change order controllers also at a proposed state. So for all other groups, they won't have modification rights on this attribute. The other one we want to look at is cost impact. And so if we edit this and go to visibility rules, and in this case, we're only going to allow visibility to change order controllers. So if we select that, we're also going to turn off any modification apart from at the proposed state. So if we confirm this and confirm this, and then let's just remind ourselves in this case of the workflow for the change order folder. So these access controls are based on group and the state of the folder in the workflow. So if we have a look at the change order process, then we can see the owning groups here and we can see the lifecycle states. So if we have a look at the workflow, at these first two steps, the change order is proposed and then it becomes active. So if we go back to DDM, let's take a look at how this has changed the controls within this change order. So right now I am logged in as a change order controller as Mark Blatherwick. It's at a state of proposed and if I edit this, you'll see that I've got full modification rights. So I'm going to set this to mechanical and I'm going to set the cost impact as less than a thousand pounds. And then we'll click on OK. So let's just log out as this user and we'll log in as a different user and see what they can see. So if we come to change orders, here's the change order that's just been raised. 
you see that this user is not able to see the cost impact. At this step, this user also doesn't have modification rights on the folder, so we can't, at this point, check if they can change the change type attribute. So we're going to log back in as the other user, and then we're going to submit this forward in the workflow. So this is a pinned folder. So we're going to send this forward in the workflow. And we're going to send it to Joe to work on. So once again, we'll log in as the other user. And we should find this folder under my own folders. And here it is. So if we look here, we can still see that we haven't got visibility of the cost impact. But now we do have modification rights on this folder because we've asked this user to implement the changes. However, if we come to edit the folder, you'll see that this user doesn't have modification rights on this change type attribute. So it's now been locked in the workflow. Now we've had the change order approved. If we assign this to another user in the group. So I'm going to assign it back to myself. And remember, I'm also a change order controller. Then we'll see the impact of this. So it's now been reassigned to myself. So we'll log back in as Mark. And if we have a look for the change order folder, which is here, then you'll see because I am a change order controller. I've still got visibility of the cost impact attribute. And if I go to edit this folder, you'll see that I still don't have modification rights on change type or cost impact. And that's because the state of the folder is now active and we can only modify these attributes at a proposed state. This enhancement significantly extends the basic access controls that were available against folders, bringing control right down to an attribute level.